All right, just leaving the office. It's about uh, one o'clock in the afternoon. I just finished wrapping up a negotiation for a client, knock 70% off their credit card. So to celebrate that victory, I got a $20 Walmart Spark. <laughs> no, actually I had to go out anyway and grab some lunch. So as I often do, I turned on my apps. So 20 bucks, it'll I was about to say it'll pay for my lunch, but no, it won't. <laughs> Crap. <laughs> the food is too damn high. I'm going to, I think I need to run for office. Instead of the rent is too damn high, I need to be the, the food is too damn high guy. The food is too damn high. Who else is with me? But that's the thing I love about these gig apps. 40 bucks an hour is pretty good. For food delivery, this is unskilled labor. You don't even need a high school diploma. You could drop out of high school, not even get a GED, and you could do all these gigs. And I'm out here making 40 bucks an hour. And I have a lot of clients that have 100 grand in student loan debt, 200,000 in stu uh, student loan debt, and don't make 40 bucks an hour. I'm not saying gig work's perfect, nothing's perfect. I was hoping to get DoorDash going out that way too. I got my DoorDash app on here and it's one o'clock. I think it would be busy. All I need to do is turn on Uber Eats. Let's turn on some Uber Eats action, see what we can get. The Uber Eats is easy enough, but the, the problem with DoorDash is their tolerances are so tight once you accept an order. you And if you're more than 10 minutes late, you'll get a contract violation. You get a couple of those and they could deactivate you. The best way to do it is get the Walmart in your car or have them at least loading it and then accept the DoorDash because you accept the DoorDash too soon and then Walmart is taking longer than it should. Uber Eats getting, trying to get me $5 for two and a half miles, but to the Wendy's that's on my no-fly zone. Tower, this is Ghost Rider requesting a flyby. Negative Ghost Rider, the pattern is full. No, it sucks. I, I don't do $5. $5 don't make me holla. I don't do $5. Denied. You sir, are denied. Not you are denied. Denied. Denied, girlfriend. Is, is it easy? Yeah, it's easy, but this Wendy's sucks. The food probably won't be ready. The guy lives in a gate, uh, it's just, I'm telling you right now, when you take $3 orders, $4 orders, $5 orders, even if it's like, well, it's on the way to a Walmart delivery, it just never works out. There's always gonna be something, not every time, but more often than not, I find my, and maybe it's just because I, 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 it, it annoys me more, $8 Safeway package pickup going the wrong way. 17 miles. Uber, all these gig apps, all these gig apps will abuse the hell out of you if you let them. So I understand when people are complaining, they get on YouTube and they complain and this, that. I understand it. But the problem is you're complaining because you have the wrong mindset. You don't understand what these gig apps are. They're not your employer. You don't work for them. They don't owe you anything. And if you're complaining, somebody would get that offer and then go off and complain about how greedy Uber is and all this. That was just a lead. You, now you're driving, you're an independent courier. Oh, I gotta check in. You're an independent courier, blah, 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 confirm arrival. Oh, crap, I should have done this. I usually do this as I'm pulling up and then I just guess my spot. Try to maximize, get these guys out here as fast as possible. But when, when you're out here, you're an independent courier. You don't work for Uber, you don't work for DoorDash, you don't work for Walmart Spark, you don't work for these companies. They don't owe you anything. These companies are just providing you as a business leads. That's it, they're providing you leads. And, and, and you look at the leads and you go, oh, that's a good one, it's profitable for, for my business, I'll take it. Oh, that one's not good, I won't take it, right? And everybody's under different circumstances. So there's some situations where I would look at an order and go, there's no way in hell I'm taking that order. But another driver would look at that order and say, hey, you know what? I'm done with my shift. This, this doesn't make any sense, dollar to mile. Let's see what DoorDash wants me to go. It's $12. Here's the thing. It's 12 miles for $12. I was just talking about this. It's way the hell out there. But this is where my, my Walmart order is going eight miles of this 12. Oh, Lance is here. I got to get this done. I'm going to, I'm going to take, I'm going to take. Sorry, man, I'm in the middle of making decisions, making videos, dude. No, I'm not gonna take that one. I don't like that one. I gotta come on. 
Damn it. Damn it, damn it. Oh, damn it, damn it, damn it. Oh. No, I'm not taking it. All right, sorry. 2228. Two, You're fast, man. All right. Well, it came out so fast, they surprised me. So I did not take that one. Lance put me on a decision, and I and I made the right. I made the right decision on that one. The I don't know that I I don't know if I even showed you. I know I didn't get a picture of it. So that DoorDash one, I almost took it because it was twelve miles, but it was going out twelve miles in and of itself. No way, no how. Horrible, horrible, horrible. Would not take that offer. But my thinking initially was, well, it's right on the way to my Walmart delivery. I got to go eight miles that way anyway. So it's really only four miles. But then when you really start breaking it down, I have to come all the way back anyway, right? So it's only $12.25. And it was at Lowe's. It wasn't a, it wasn't a pickup. It was a shop. It was five... Actually, I wasn't sure if it was a shop or not. I don't th actually, I think it was just a pickup, but it said five items. That could have been five bags of stuff, could have been five items. I didn't even have a chance to see what the items were. It could be some heavy ass items for all I know. Now I got a full thing of groceries in the back. I didn't know what the items were. So that was number one. Number two, it's going to be at least four miles further, further out, which means four miles further and four miles back. So now it's eight miles extra. Now, all of a sudden, that 1225 is not really looking awesome. Granted, I'm already driving 16 miles, eight out to my Walmart and eight back, but I still have another four more to go and four more back. So that order, that shows you how bad that one order was. That's 12 miles out and 12 miles back for $12.25. And I'm not sure how long it was going to take me in the lows and, and the items. Look at the juice and the squeeze, right? Is the juice worth the squeeze? And at first $12 seems nice, but you start adding all that stuff up. Now, if that was only eight miles out, basically real close to this Walmart delivery, I probably, I would have rolled the dice. But the fact that it's an extra four, I was just like, nah. So now I'm sitting here, I've got the groceries in my car. The nice thing about Walmart deliveries is you don't have to, it's not like DoorDash where you get the order and now they're timing you and boom, 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 boom. Walmart's timing you, but it's like, you know, this order... I haven't even accepted it in the car yet. Just said I'm done scanning. And the food's fine. It's sitting in the air condition. I'm not, I'm not going to sit here. I'm not going to sit here all, all afternoon But because I don't want to waste my time either. But it's not going to hurt me to wait four or five more minutes because right here is the area where all the restaurants and food is. Out where this Walmart is going, there's just the houses. So once I get out there, I'm not going to get a DoorDash. So I'm hoping I can get a DoorDash or an Uber Eats right here going out that way. So instead of getting $20 for driving these eight miles out and eight miles back, I can maybe get 30. But things are slow today, apparently. And apparently every time, <laughs> apparently Grandpa just gives me a remote after we watch the Powerball. <laughs> One o'clock, I would expect there to be more orders here. Alas, there is not. Sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. If I don't get anything in the next three or four minutes, I'm just going to start heading out. Because... I'm just sitting in the parking lot waiting. I don't like to wait. If you get an offer and you're real close to the store, now there's a chance it went to somebody else or a couple other people and they didn't take it. But if it's a good offer and you're at the store right away because you're right by the store, there's a chance you're going to be waiting. Because if it's a good offer, very unlikely that it's made the rounds of other drivers and nobody took it. So, all right, 775 for seven, six miles going completely the wrong way. Doesn't help me at all. So that's a decline for you, DoorDash. Decline. Come on, DoorDash. Come on, Uber. Give me something. Have I even seen an Instacart? I, I could do a small Instacart too. I can't do like a 30 item shop or anything with the Walmart groceries, but uh, if I get like, like there's a, a Sprouts right there, there's a lot of Sprouts orders going that way. If I get 10 item Sprout shop for 20 bucks or something like that, I'd do that. Going out the same way, that'd be good. I think the universe is saying, go drop these groceries, tuck your tail between your legs of only making your 20 bucks and go back home and do some real work. 
That's what that's what the universe is saying. The universe is saying, and sometimes you got to know when to cut bait, right? If it's not, it's one o'clock in the afternoon on a Wednesday. Food delivery should be going going right now, and it's not. So I'm not going to waste any more time sitting here. I'm going to start driving. I don't know how these algorithms work. It could just be anecdotal, but I feel like, and I could be totally wrong. I have no idea. Don't clap. Don't clap. I don't read. I don't read. Follow someone else. But I feel like these apps start leaving the area. The algorithm goes, oh, this driver's leaving the area. We want to keep him here. Let's throw an offer at him. And again, it's probably anecdotal, but it just seems like that all the time. Seems like when I'm sitting where they want me to sit, I get a lot less offers. And I've tested this at the airport where I used to do a lot of Lyft and Uber. And I would swear by it because I would be driving by the airport. There would be 30 people you could see on the phone, 30 people in the airport queue. I'm not going to sit in that. I've, I've tried that too. That is a complete waste of time. Anybody sitting in the airport queue, sorry, that's, that's the wrong thing to do. You're not going to make much money. Just sitting there waiting for a ride with 30, 40 other drivers. But I can't tell you how many times because it was a lot where I would be driving by the airport or in the area within a few miles of the airport and I would get pinged with a ride from the airport. McDonald's, McDonald's is right here. Damn it. It's five dollars going five miles but more importantly it is the exact wrong way. That is a, I almost hit accept. That would have been bad. That's a decline. Can't do that one. Nor would I want to because that would be, here's a Instacart, $8 for nine items at the fries. Which, where, where's it going? Not that I would do eight. Oh, it's the fries behind me. No, it's not even the fries that's on the way, but I, not for eight bucks. I'm not going to do. For me, everybody has different, you got to have, you got to have rules. You got to set boundaries for yourself. Otherwise you'll let these apps run you ragged. I, I, I don't think I finished my point before. I was pulling into the Walmart. These apps will absolutely abuse you 100%. They'll abuse you. They'll abuse your car, right? And you can get mad at that. And I understand why people get mad at that. But here's the thing. Don't let them abuse you and then get mad at them for abusing you. The easier solution is don't let them abuse you. Use these apps for what they are, which are lead providers for your own independent courier business. Thank them for providing you with leads and opportunity when you didn't have it before. You on your own without these apps, you're an independent courier, but you got no business. Now you could grow that business and you could develop that business, but what easier and better way to grow a business and grow a clientele than have companies send you clients that already need these services? And then you can convert those to private clients if that's what you want to do. So. So don't take the energy complaining about Uber, saying they're not, they're never going to be fair, right? Use them as much as they're using you. It's all in your perspective, right? I'm driving for the same Uber and DoorDash and Instacart that these people that are complaining about these apps are driving for. And I'll be honest, I absolutely get frustrated a time or two. But once you, once you get into the mindset of, Hey, I'm out here as an independent contractor, which you are. And I'm not actively trying to grow a business. I don't have, I'm, I'm out here doing this stuff for the YouTube channel. I'm actually trying to grow the YouTube channel because I think it's, I, I, I'm biased, but I, I think this is, this is fun. I think this, I like, uh, helping people make money. I've, I've always been like that. I'm a, I'm a financial consultant. I help people that have massive amounts of credit card debt or student loan debt. And I, I, find creative ways to get them out of that debt. That's what I do. And one of the ways that helps us get out of debt or helps my clients is if, hey, if you had an extra thousand dollars a month or two thousand dollars a month, we have a lot more options available for getting rid of this credit card debt and, and, and helping you achieve the financial goals that you want to achieve for yourself. We have a lot more options, right? And so for years, I've been doing this over 20 years now. For years I'd say now, not 20 years ago, because Uber, these things didn't exist back then, but I would say, hey, you tried DoorDash, you tried Lyft, you tried this, tried Uber, blah, blah, blah. And almost inevitably, there would always be pushback. I can't do it because. 
I can't do it because. I can't do it because. I can't do it because. I can't do it because. Right? There's all these reasons. All these reasons why people couldn't make extra money. When, when you spell it out, reasons is spelled excuses. Now, I'm not saying everybody has to do this. But on one hand, if you're not happy with where you're at in your life, these are opportunities that did not exist just 10 years ago. Now, are they the right opportunity for everybody in all situations? Absolutely not. But I decided to start this Penny Stupid channel because I felt it would be better instead of telling people, hey, did you try this? Did you try this? To be able to say, hey, this is how you do it. Right? And then that way, when they give me an excuse, as the good consultant that I am, I could say, well, actually, I can understand how you feel that way. But here's what I have found when I did it. And the first month I went out and drove Lyft, this was October of 2022. The first month I did it, the very first month, and I know times are different now than they were back then. The very first month, turned on the app, all I was doing was Lyft. I didn't have any other apps on. I was just trying it for the channel. And I, I don't get me wrong, I drove my ass off. That first month, I drove 40 plus hours a week in the evenings. I was out every night. I was having a blast. And it was almost like a video game. I like just following this app and money was showing up. And I was, just, I got hooked. I was like, some people get addicted to Candy Crush. <laughs> I get addicted to the Lyft and Uber video game, the DoorDash video game. How much real money can I actually put in the account? But that very first month, not knowing anything about the app or how it worked or anything, essentially just kind of pointing my car where the app told me to go and then fine tuning and figuring out things as I went. I made $6,500. Damn! $6,500. First month, no idea what I was doing. And I was hooked. I was sitting there going, I have clients that have college degrees, six-figure student loan debts that can't find jobs paying more than I made driving my first month of Lyft ever. And that was, I had no clue. And that was, but that was the reason I wanted to do it. If you would have asked me before that, Hey, do you think I could drive Lyft and make $6,500 in a month? I would have had no clue, but I would have probably said, probably not. That seems like a decent amount of money for just driving a car. And it is, and it was. Uber wants me to go seven miles for $6, go to Burger King, it's way out of my way. That's a, that's a big no thank you. Uber, I thank you for the offer. Uber, I thank you for the lead. But I shall politely decline. So you can give that to somebody that doesn't know their numbers. Because unfortunately, there's a lot of drivers that don't know their numbers, that don't understand this game, don't understand how it works. And they look at $6 and they look at the top line number and they think, well, I'm broke. I'm sitting in a parking lot. I need $6. But what they don't think about is it probably costs them 50 cents a mile to operate their vehicle. Right? There's a difference between revenue and profit. So if you're going to take a seven-mile order for $6, number one, you can probably only do three of those in an hour top, especially if you're only single apping, right? Sitting there as a DoorDash driver, sitting there as an Uber Eats driver, and that's all you're doing. You can probably only get three of those max. Why? Is it possible you could do four if you get back to back to back to back? Yeah, possible. But you're probably only going to get three of those best case scenario. So if your top line number is six bucks and you're taking those kind of orders, What's the most you're going to make? $18. And that's top line. Now let's say you take three of those orders, seven miles, seven miles, seven miles, and they're back to back. And you don't drive anywhere in between. You just wait. And it's all perfect. And you, the, the, the first one drops you off um, area where you're going to get in. Everything lines up right. You're going to get $18. Now, you can say, well, $18 an hour. That's like working at fast food. That's not bad. No, you're not making $18 an hour. You have to know your numbers. And for most people, the IRS gives you 67 cents as an expense per mile. Most cars, if it's fairly efficient, you start adding up everything, depreciation, tires, maintenance, future repairs, 
you start really adding up your costs, obviously gas. I like to use 50 cents a mile, mainly because it's easy math, right? And using 50 cents a mile, even if it's not exactly right, is better than not using anything at all, which is what a lot of drivers do, unfortunately. So you go and you make $18. You think, well, I'm doing pretty good because I didn't have to get hired at uh, McDonald's or anything like that. I'm getting $18 an hour. No, you're not. Because if you're taking orders like that, six bucks for seven miles. Now, under a perfect scenario, you did three in an hour and you drove seven miles each, no in-between miles, which is not likely. You're going to have some in-between miles, but let's just say you didn't. Now you've driven 21 miles, okay? 50 cents a mile, that's $10.50. So you get your 18, but it costs you $10.50. Now, not all of that right away, so a lot of you don't see that expense. Depreciation is not a tangible expense for most people. Tires is not a tangible expense in the moment. Future maintenance, not a tangible expense in the moment. Future repairs, if you're putting a couple hundred thousand miles on your car, not a tangible expense in the moment, but an expense nonetheless. Most of you guys, the best you do is just think about gas, right? Well, a lot of cars, gas is going to be 15, 20 cents a mile, okay? You got to figure 50 cents a mile, so you're going to spend 10, 50. So you didn't just make 18 taking those kind of orders, right? You made... 750, okay, in an hour. Now if, now, if you really want to go deep on this and you're an independent contractor, take it a step further. You're a, 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 an individual private courier business. You in the car are the driver as the employee of you, Inc., right? You're starting a business. You're a business owner, but you're also an employee. Okay, now thinking about revenue, you made $18 in revenue. Expenses off the top, you got to set aside for ten fifty. Now you got seven fifty. Not even profit yet. Ten seven fifty after expenses. Now you got to pay the employee. How much are you going to pay the employee? You, you are the employee. How much are you going to get paid? If you went to In and Out, you wouldn't have ten dollars and fifty cents of expenses as the employee. You just show up and you're working. You get paid eighteen dollars an hour. You get paid eighteen dollars an hour gross. They take off taxes and all that stuff, right? Okay, how much do you want to make as an employee? You go, oh, I want to, I want to make $25 an hour. Okay, guess what? There's only $7.50 left to pay you because you as an employee made bad decisions. So you're not going to make $25 an hour. You're going to get your $7.50 and that's, that's, we're not talking even taxes, anything like that. Okay, you have no profit. So the business owner doesn't like this business. There's no profit there. There's not even enough revenue taking those kind of orders to even pay the employee, much less have profit. So what do you got to do? Not take those orders, right? Now, what if that order was, now what if that was $12 or $15 for those seven miles? Well, now you still have the same 1050 expense in that same scenario. The expenses don't change. The revenue changes, right? Okay, revenue went up. I don't understand these houses that don't have, ad how, do, how are the fire department gonna make sure they've got the right house if there's a medical emergency or something? But now let's say you've got making you know, dollar orders. Now you got $45 in revenue for that hour, for the same expenses, okay? You got $35 to play with now. As a business owner, your employee wants to make 25 an hour. You want to make 25 an hour. Great. You've got enough revenue now to pay your employee 25 an hour. And you've got $10 left over for actual profit. You know how that works? Right? So my point is you have to take profitable orders, right? $6, $5, $6, $7 orders, they're not profitable. You'll never make a profit taking those. I shouldn't say never. If they're like a mile away and you're going to be done in five minutes and boom, 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 okay, and be profitable. But $6 orders going six or seven miles, no fly zone all day long. No, no, ma'am, this is not a good idea. Sorry, Goose, but it's time to bust the tower.